here outside my garage, got the Explorer in the background there. People are always asking me how to make six figures. You know, it's pretty easy. One, don't quit teaching. Two, move to the Chicago suburbs. Okay, so obviously that really is a way for you to make six figures. They pay awfully well up there, uh, but I'm just playing around. I'm here on vacation and I can't help it. Every time I grab this camera and I hold it out in front of me like this, I think of Ty Lopez and I wanna do some stupid commercial thing that he does. Uh, I don't have a Ferrari. I have, the family has the Explorer that my wife can't see over the, uh, she can't see over the dash. So we end up with stuff like this. Can you see that? Yeah, 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 see, should destroy the old, her car, but uh, I am on vacation and I cannot believe I'm making a film Friday. Now we're on the top of a mountain. It's really beautiful uh, in the Smoky Mountains, Tennessee, outside Pigeon Forge, Gatlinburg area. You can see, I mean, it's beautiful. The kids love it. And uh, we started off with a two day, two night, three day, two night camping trip. It's about two hours south of here, way out in the sticks, where we're the only people in the campsite. That was pretty awesome. Boy, it's getting dark, can't see me. I gotta turn this way. That, there it is. That was pretty awesome. Uh, and now we just rented this cabin about 20 minutes outside Pigeon Forge. And we're just having a blast with it because you just get to be lazy and go into town if you want to, to do something fun. But uh, I almost didn't do a film Friday. But the only thing I hate worse than working on vacation is breaking a streak Ooh, let's i'm gonna have to fix that light in a second breaking my streak now my streak was it's like 21 straight weeks of a film friday i can't break that streak so i got a little setup here look at the setup yep got the computer got water bottles and two board games set up that's where i'll put this camera we can get this done so as I said, uh, I have no internet access up here. I haven't been able to do much of anything. It's limited me, limited me to this one video. I couldn't, I'm having, I can't do thing, little things like Twitter, or mess with anything that I normally do, which I think ultimately is probably a really good thing for me. So all I had here was some old footage on one of my hard drives, and I'm gonna take you back. I'm not gonna spend a, a ton of time, but I think this is really interesting. I'm gonna take you back to my, without a doubt, the toughest season of my head coaching career. The year was 2010. I had uh, had two successful seasons at Milford High School, tiny little high school. I'd been from the Chicago suburbs. My wife wanted to be in a bigger town. Uh, I, I kind of promised her that the, the trip to the tiny town was just, you know, it was a stepping stone was to get us somewhere bigger. And I'm a big Cardinal fan, baseball, baseball Cardinals. Um, and I always wanted to be near the St. Louis suburbs. Even though I didn't know anybody there. I had no connections besides I love the Cardinals. And uh, there was a job in Alton, Illinois that opened up. And it's just out, just north of St. Louis on the Illinois side of the river. And they had been horrible. They were 0-9 the year before. Um, actually, that they, they had been, just had a couple bad years in a row. They had a coach that had really, Joe Hook, who had really run a great program, had run into some tough times, and they got rid of him. So I came into a not a great situation. We did have a couple pretty talented seniors. We really did. And without a doubt, like I said, the toughest season of my life. You know, I learned a lot through that. It was my first season in an urban environment, and I learned a lot in, in that situation. It was um, obviously we, we didn't have a ton of talent because, you know, they had been 0 9 the year before for a reason. But we did have some very good working pieces, man. We were not, uh, we were certainly not void of talent. We had a few studs, and and maybe we didn't realize it at the time. I realize it now. And uh, in that season, we went one and seven, one and eight. And that was hard on me. It was hard on our staff. I took it very, very hard. We lost four of those games by less than a touchdown. And I'm going to show you the end of the last two games of that season. So we're going in the last two games of our season. We're one and six. We got two games left. And the only two teams left are two playoff teams. One was Belleville West, who ended up going five and four on that year and making the playoffs. And one was O'Fallon who was, ended up going eight and one on the year. Those were our last two games. You're gonna see how we lost those last two games and just how, well, you know, I guess you get to see how far I've come as a coach and, and where that led, how I got to where I am, but also you get to see 
tough ways to lose a game. Man, I've lost some tough ones, and uh, I, <clears throat> I think that's part of the game, right? I, I would rather be losing these tough ones, though, right now than some of the rear-end kickings we took this year. Man, let's go watch some film. So as I said, I don't have any huddle. We gotta do this old school, like you pull up a clip and push play, and there's nothing to draw on. But this right here is the end of the Belleville West game. And at the end of the Belleville West game, we are, um, we're down by a touchdown. Again, they're a playoff team. We know it, we're one and six, uh, but we really didn't, we knew we had some working pieces that made us potentially good. Now on this season, this is the year after we were a triple option team, well, I became a fly sweep team. I saw Gordon Elliott out in um, Auburn, Washington. I saw him at a clinic in Denver, and he showed this fly sweep. And what I loved about the fly sweep was how low percent, I guess how, how low risk it was. That, the, that it was very high percentage. Uh, and when I say high percentage, I say uh, you're taking out the element of human error. You really are. You just you're taking that element out um, and and you get to see kind of here we are we're down by a touchdown uh, here's a nice little uh, you can see let me try to get this the right spot we have two wings an offset fullback throw a nice little hitch to him we had a real good receiver that's Kevin Wade right there I'll never forget him back in 2010 Corbin Newquist to Kevin Wade um, I'll try to fast forward to some of this. Now one of the games is just, I'm gonna play and fast forward. The other game is actual clips. But you can see we were just fly sweep. You can see my tight end is in a stand up stance. That's what Gordon Elliott was doing. That's what I wanted to do. Um, but you know, it's just that everything was off the fly sweep motion. This is just a busted play. I don't wanna spend too much time. But here's something we used to do that I probably probably shouldn't have got away gotten away from. I'm not crazy about uh, I'm obviously, I'm not crazy about being in the spread, quote unquote, uh, but there are some things that we used to do that all the way up until about 2012, 2013 that really came in handy. So we used to just would jump into doubles here, two by two, in a third, this is third and nine, and we would just drop our fullback down to this little wing. And what we would do every time out of that, or almost every time, was he would set this edge right here. Sorry, that play button keeps popping up, but he would just set this edge and hook, you know, kind of reach that last man on the line of scrimmage while our quarterback would roll out here to the bottom of the screen. We would roll out at him, whichever way we offset. We'd just roll out and throw some comebacks for, on third and 10. It was a nice little play set. Um, and then this was a nice little compliment to it. Kind of roll him down, and then we went screen to the top of the screen. Well, that was a nice, uh, that's a nice play call. I was kind of, uh, I was impressed with myself. I'm going, ooh, hey, that. I don't feel like that same guy right now. <laughs> Not that I don't have good ideas. I just, I just, I've changed a lot since then. But look at that. I mean, that was that. Not only did we get our first down, but that's a 40 yard play with about four to five minutes to play in the game. This kid, Lawrence Moore, was electric. Um, he ran that fly sweep so well, whether or not we did. Now, keep in mind, we're playing a really good team here. We're one and seven. Look at that. We try to run trap. We just get run down. That brings up another thing I still have to get better at, and that's switching up our snap count. We just didn't, I've never done a real good job of that, and that's entirely on me. This counterplay, I miss this counterplay out of the fly sweep. This fly sweep counterplay is nice. Old 31 there, Lawrence Moore used to run that real nice. I love how he just, he just sold it very, very well. Look at that action right there by 31. You see that fake action right here? Watch him take a nice fake, he bellies back, he buries his head and makes a move of acceleration. That's a good looking fake, man. 31 has a lot to do with that big counter play right there. Okay, and now this is at the end of the year. We just kind of start jumping into, I'm gonna fast forward a little bit. This, we start realizing how similar this fly sweep is to the wing tee. At the time, I had no idea. And this is where I slowly start becoming a wing tee guy. I had no idea that the fly sweep was this similar to the wing tee. Here we just got a third and one. We sneak it. Do we get it? Yep, we got it. Now we got a first and goal. About three minutes left in the game. Go buck sweep here to the bottom of the field. Three minutes left in the game, and we are down by a touchdown. Actually, I think we were down by six. Something of about like 20 to 14, I think we're down. 
trying ISO, can't get it, and now we come back. It's, it's, I think it's third down now. Our kids are, we had a great atmosphere there at Alton, a, a packed house, a great student section. Um, and we go fly sweep here to the bottom of the screen. And Lawrence Moore here, number 31, was so excited. He ran clear across the track. I'll never forget. Literally, he is on the other side of the track. Look at the camera trying to find him. Just going crazy. It, it, was, <laughs> it was a great moment. So we go, it's 20 to 20, and we take the lead right here. Now watch this. See number four right here? Number four was our up back, and we did the old swinging gate. And when we would shift, four would come off the field and our kicker would come on the field. Now we did that the entire year. Uh, I can't remember. It was one of my assistant's ideas. He had seen it somewhere. We used it. It was good for us the entire year. Keep that in mind for game nine. This is game eight, the end of the game. Okay? So we switch. We make the extra point. Now we are up 21 20. Let's go to the next clip. I'm going to close that one. 21-20, they come down and score quickly. I was very disappointed, but we made a mistake. They're a good football team. They score, and now they're up. And Well, this one puts them up by seven. They get the two-point conversion to go up by seven rather than six. So a great play by them. Um, and now here we go. We're going to get the ball back, and I believe, if I remember correctly, there was around a minute and a half to two minutes to go in the game. Uh, again, we're a beat up, mentally beat up football team at this point. We, and, and I'm mentally beat up. Being one and six, you guys that have been through a real hard seasons, any hard seasons, you know how mentally grind, mentally grueling it is. Uh, it's a mental challenge. It challenges you as a man. It really does. And, and who you can be, how resilient you can be. Uh, I don't think I reacted real well through this season. Uh, I was a beat up uh, individual. But we get a nice little kick return here, man. Bless his heart. Rest in peace. That's Dan Tavier Thompson. Dan Tavier was shot and killed two years ago. Um, it, it just a, a, He played corner for us, had great speed. What a great attitude this young man had. We'll miss him like crazy. Uh, but a nice return by Dan Tavier, man, to, to give us hope, man, late in the game. You can see our sideline is pumped up. Some sort of penalty here to kick us off. We get back into our wing T stuff. You know, it's, it, this buck sweep had start had, was starting to be really good to us late in the season. We didn't run a whole lot from it. We just ran that buck sweep. And now we go right off that fake into our number one pass, uh, play action pass. We called it wagons. And all would happen, you, you know, my cameraman, I wish you could hear him. You're going to hear him in the next uh, game because the audio was on for some reason. Uh, he was just a graduate who was two or three years out of high school who came back to help us out and would, he was just a straight up fan. <laughs> I loved listening to him. But take a look at this. We're just going to run the, the tight end and the wing release together. Tight end hooks up and just runs a hitch at 10, a hook at 10, and the, the wing back just runs a post. And that just made it, it was a it was a tough conflict for that safety because that safety kept wanting to come down on that tight end because we would drag him a lot, right? Because we're wing T base, he's gonna boot a lot. And that safety wants to chase him, so now he hooks up, that safety comes up, corners out leveraged, and that vertical just get just beats him. Okay, what a great play. And this was a, a huge moment for us. I want you to see this kid. This is Andrew Moore, our fullback, off this play. Watch this. We throw this for a touchdown right here. Watch number four. Watch how he just puts his head up. I get, you can just hear his elation and see his excitement. Watch number four. Here he, here he is right there. Look at that. Do you see that? There he is. Number four right there. His hands are up. He And this is a kid who that whole year just showed no emotion. You know, really wasn't crazy about me when I first got there because we weren't going to be in the spread. Their last guy wasn't in the spread. They really wanted that. Um, so it was like one of those tumultuous times and you see these moments where these kids are just, they're, they're feeling that, that excitement you can only get from athletics and you can only get from competing like this at this level. You, it's the only way you can get that feeling. And there he is experiencing that feeling. And the, those are the, that's the great thing about football that, that will keep me in this forever. So we score, we are now up, um, no, we are now down by one. 28, 27, we run our guy off, we bring our new guy on. We're one and six, playing a playoff team. I don't want overtime, so I call our best fake extra point. And really, the unfortunate thing is, the fake extra point is exactly like their fake extra point. Uh, your wing back comes around, we toss it to him. The thing is, it's there. 
it is there. You know, he has the option as we tell him, listen, you're going to have two guys back there. If they come up on you or force them to come up on you and just flip it over their heads. Um, I can't fault him for it, though, because that's Lawrence Moore. He's our best running back. He felt like he could get it, and he comes up just short, and we lose another, another game. So instead of beating a team and kind of giving ourselves some hope, we, we lose another heartbreaker. I'll never forget that loss. That was a tough one on us, but we were right there. And so now we go in to week number nine. And week number nine waiting for us is O'Fallon. And they're the second best team in the conference next to East St. Louis. I don't know if any of you have ever heard of East St. Louis. Down there, everybody just calls them Eastside. Uh, but, but these guys were second only to them. A great football team. These guys are good every year in Illinois, O'Fallon. And they've got us down. I might turn that sound down a little bit. But they've got us down 21-nothing at half. And we come out after half, and we are just scoring like crazy. And they can't stop us. We're just running buck sweep. They cannot stop buck sweep. And here we come storming back. We're down, no, I'm sorry, it was 20 to nothing. We're down 20 to 14 at this point. All right, 2014, let's go Redbirds. We're the Alton Redbirds. You can hear the sound a little bit, a little double wing. Let's give it to our fullback right off tackle there. Okay, just a couple little yards. Oh, I forgot, this is gonna be. I'm gonna have to pick and choose my clips here. Here we go into our wing T look. Probably gonna go buck sweep. Sure enough, we do. And look, you can see just, we're just get. this was the whole second half. We're getting eight to 10 yards a clip on when we would go buck sweep. So we would try to not overuse it, but we were using it like crazy. We'd jump into something else for a play uh, and try to run it just to keep them honest to the buck sweep and then come back and run buck sweep. I mean, that was all we really did in that second half. And we come storming back against a seven and one football team and we're one and seven. Try to go trap, nothing doing. And I won't spend too much time on each play just because as I said, it's really about tough losses rather than scheme today. But you can see, you know, wing tee, this is how we kind of, how I evolved into a wing tee guy. I went, went from flex bone to, it went from flex bone to fly sweep to wing tee. Nice little play action pass. Look at this. We've got him again. This is that same play action pass wagons. We've got him open and uh, he just can't come up with it. Looks like a tough third and nine right here. Let's see what we've got up our sleeve. Tough third and nine, game on the line, closing drive. I think there's two and a, two and a half, three minutes to go. Right back to Buck Sweet, man. That's what had been clicking. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe that was second and nine. We'll see here. It's either third and two or three or fourth and two or three. By the sound of the crowd, it sounds like fourth and two or three. Sure enough, we try freeze play and they jump. Good call, a good call. Fourth and two, we had to have it. We just freeze them, they jump, we get the first down. A little confusion here, the linemen go back to our wing T type look. I think we run power here instead of buck sweep. Like I said, just trying to keep them a little bit honest. I don't know that we had a necessarily feel, a necessary, we necessarily had a feeling about their reading this or they're reading that. We just knew buck sweep is killing them. Let's just keep them honest to it so we can keep running it when we gotta have it. All right, fullback offsets. Almost always we would run our motion at our fullback, try our counterplay that had been so good to us. Doesn't pop this time. You know, I just remind you, this is we're playing a great football team here who had a fantastic season, and we're one and seven. And everyone really, we're we're playing with everyone. All right, I think we're at about second and 10. There's been a couple people jumping. Right back to Buck Sweep. Sure enough, look at that. That was, that was about second and 12, first down. That is amazing. And that this is, you know, you can see why all of a sudden I'm falling in love with Buck Sweep. Because I'm looking at a team who's one and seven, run it all over these guys. Right back to Fly Sweep to Lawrence Moore. You can see, I mean, this kid was special. Special, just good speed, and we're just ripping off five yards a clip. Right back to our counter play. Again, I just, I love that counter play, man. All right, let's fast forward it a little bit. Let's get us down closer to the end zone, and 
see um, see kind of how this game closes out. I don't know if you'll ever believe if you would believe that. What do you suppose we'll run here? Yep, buck sweep. <laughs> right back into our wing tee, buck sweep. Uh, it was almost like we couldn't go wrong with it. And I was just scared to run it too many times because I didn't want it to stop working. Now everything's getting tight. There's really short time. We come up with a quick play action pass. I thought we had it on this one. Nice little wheel. Safety does a nice job of closing the window. Quarterback probably should have threaded a little bit or put a little bit more on it, right? You got to hit that window between the corner and the safety and we don't quite hit it. Third and eight, I just heard the announcer say, with, with the game on the line, third and eight, baby. Slant to our great wide receiver. You know, I, I wonder how much more we could have completed that stuff. So now we've got first down. So now we're down 20 to 14, first and goal. Game on the line, about 30 seconds to go against the 7-1 football team. Bang, we score. We pump it in. You can see our kids going crazy there. We punch that thing in and we it is 20 to 20. Our extra point kicker is automatic. He's automatic. He's great. We, though, in this game, remember that player, who, number four, who ran off the field while the, our kicker ran on? Well, in this game, the ninth game of the season, the refs say that's illegal. I, I'm sure they're right. But no one says anything about it for the whole season. So the ninth game, they say that's illegal. You can't do it. So we are trying to get it fixed. Now, we get it. We do it the first time. They warn us. The second time, they penalize us. So now here we are on the third the third score, because this was 20 to 20, and we call timeout. And we call timeout because I gotta get the personnel switched already, and I tell my guys, listen, don't swing and gate, line up in the extra point, we've got this, easy snap, easy hold, kick it, it's good. We've got this game in the bag. There's only 20 seconds or 30 seconds to go on the clock. Punch this in, and we got a chance to end this season on a high note. So, there's the timeout, here we go. 20 to 20 for the win. Looks like a busted play, right? Here's what actually happened. Number 54, our kicker, who's a great kid, for some reason, I don't know why, he thinks we called our fake, that we would want we wanted to run by it and fake kick it, and so he fake kicks it. Again, it's 20 to 20. Logic says you're gonna kick that extra point. There was nothing in the huddle spoken of a fake. So he makes a mistake. You wanna talk about a tough way to lose a game. This game goes to overtime. We score. We, make, uh, we miss our extra point. He then misses an extra point. And why does he miss? Because after this kick, or this lack of a kick, he comes over and I proceed to berate this young man worse than I've ever berated a human being in my life. And I'm ex incredibly ashamed of it. And I was ashamed even after the game. But at that moment, I was so beat up mentally that I was weak, incredibly weak. And I took the game out of perspective and I took all of my frustration out on this poor young man. And um, I've apologized to him, I apologize to you again. This season was not on you, or that game certainly wasn't. There's a million games, plays in that within that game that, that could have swung it. And I screwed up by uh, completely just, just sucking the life out of that young man in a one minute period where I said as many mean things as I could. It was horrible, it was awful and I'll always be ashamed. I beg that you will not make that same mistake and all of you guys coaching know that uh, this game can be hard on you, it can be hard on kids as well. I've not made that mistake since. It's not that I don't chew kids out, uh, but I've not made that mistake since. I had to learn that lesson a very hard way and I still feel bad about it. That's two tough losses right there. We end up one and eight. Um, that's a rough one. What are you gonna do? That is coaching. The next year, we couldn't win. My wife and I never sold our house. We were living in someone's basement. Um, I resigned from that job because 
probably a lot because I was miserable because I couldn't handle it and half because we couldn't afford it because we could not sell our house. And we moved back to our house and I didn't know what was going to be next for me coaching. We just, I just knew I had to move back to my house and I got to find a way um, to make money from here. It was an odd, situ an odd time of my life and a, and a little bit of a rough patch. Uh, but I think that's good for everyone. It's good for us all to go through that. It's good for me this morning to see that and remember that. Um, and I, I, I'm so thankful for those kids. Those were a lot of good kids in there. I wish that uh, I wish I could have been a better, even better coach for them in that season. Uh, but I'll never forget those guys. Hopefully, there are some mem great memories from that season. There's a couple um, stories from practice from that season that made me laugh so hard, and still to this day, uh, are some of the funniest things I've ever happened in in, in a football practice. But uh, thanks for joining me. Guys, here on Film Friday, I'll see you next week and likely be right back in the office in Champaign, Illinois. Until then, man, coach them up and be good to these kids. Thanks for joining me, guys. I hope you guys are able to learn from maybe some successes and some failures of mine. Hey, check out last week's Film Friday, Joe Blender, State Champion.